Good morning, everyone. I'm Don Infante, and I'm president of the Regency Oaks Association. We're here this morning because we have our monthly forum with all the directors, and we're going to get an update on what's going on. But it's a tough time for all of us. You know, we're just getting to where the rest of the world is going out, but we're not quite there yet. And so what I ask each of you is to be patient and stick with us because we're doing well and we don't want to do anything but that. So be patient. Grant has a great plan he's going to unveil to us soon. I ask you all to hang in there with us. So thank you very much. We're going to miss you here today, but we have a bunch of great people ready to go. So Brent, with that, I'll turn it over to you. Good morning, everyone. To get us started here this morning, uh, we're going to have Sandra give us a, a culture update. And uh, Sandra. Yes. So this whole week, we've been celebrating Senior Living Week. Um, it is Disney themed, hence my ear, my bow. Um, and we've been feeding them all week long, giving away prizes, playing games. Um, and then also LCS sent us these awesome shirts that match the sign up front um, that were shining so brightly. So make sure if you see a staff member that you do recognize them and just tell them thank you. All right, let's go uh, right to the board and take a look at uh, where we stand with our, our tracking. This first chart we're going to look at uh, right across the uh, top, you see the horizontal lines. Uh, and this sort of gives us a chronological order of, of what's been happening. Uh, we started uh, way back in uh, uh, late February, early March, uh, by uh, uh, end of uh, March, 1st of April, we had shut down our schools, uh, any uh, large group gatherings, stay at home orders were issued, businesses were closed. And then uh, right in the middle of the chart on May 1st, uh, the governor reopened businesses in phase one and down below we can sort of see the corresponding uh, change. Uh, all the way over here, this is mobility data. This is based on cell phone tracking. Uh, this was our baseline uh, back in February, early March. Uh, and you can uh, uh, see where the, the normal baseline is. It's this uh, gray line all the way across. Uh, with the orders that the governor put in place and that industries followed throughout the uh, county and state, you can see that uh, traffic, people who were out and about, really significantly dropped. Uh, and back here, uh, back on uh, April 1st, if we uh, hover right over the April 1st date, we'll get some data. Uh, we had about negative 54% uh, that's less traffic than normal uh, back on April 1st. It pretty much stayed that way until we got up here to May 1st. And on May 1st, when the governor reopened Florida, uh, we went up about 10 percentage points uh, to 44% uh, below baseline. And this data runs, this is the most current data, but it runs uh, about a week behind. And so on May 3rd, there were only uh, three days in the data collection cycle. Uh, but on May 3rd, you see that we had about a one percentage increase in uh, mobility. And I want you to look at the results of a 1% increase in increased traffic and mobility. We'll go to the next slide. And the line that, that I want to look at uh, right here is we're going to come out over here to May 1st, uh, and we're going to go from May 1st to May 3rd. This dark yellow line is the confirmed cases, and it was stagnant. It just stayed the same uh, over that three-day cycle. Uh, we uh, did not, we had 668, and if you roll out to the third, you'll see that number has only increased. Got a little computer lag, hold, hold on with us here. If we go out to the third, So you can, this uh, chart goes out to the uh, 10th 
Uh, and you can see the confirmed cases are at 662, so sort of stagnant. Uh, if we uh, go back to look at the dash line, which are the es estimated infections, and maybe uh, pull the data back off the screen. So you can see uh, what has happened as the number of tests, that's that solid blue line, as the number of tests have increased, the projections have continued to rise. What we're looking for in terms of daily infections and testing is we want to see the testing line continue to accelerate. That's the uh, uh, blue line at the top, but we want to see the daily infections begin to recline. If you follow this out, this continues to rise until about this point. Looks like it's uh, May 22nd. At that point, the projected infections will begin to fall off and our reopening plan is 14 days beyond the break of the peak of critical cases. So in this scenario, if you take May 22nd and added 14 days to it, that would put us opening somewhere uh, first week of June, maybe the start of the second week. Let's go look at daily deaths. Similar scenario here, uh, the increased testing, uh, increased number of infections, it is going to continue to rise. If we look at this and transfer out to the peak and the drop, our peak looks to be about June 14th. Uh, and we would add 14 days to that. It is a matter of trying to blend the two charts, the number of deaths and the number of new cases, selecting that date where we think we have a positive trend line, adding 14 days, and then entering a phased approach. So it is really difficult at this point to uh, predict and give you an exact date on when we might expect to reopen. It looks, my best estimate is we are, are still three weeks away uh, and we will just continue to follow these trend lines and try to make uh, projections based upon what we can do to, to keep us uh, safe and uh, uh, help to defeat and control this uh, virus. This is the uh, projected uh, death rate uh, here in the state of Florida. Uh, if we take a look at today, uh, our death, ca death count in Florida uh, today is sitting right at uh, 2,060 for, this is again for the entire state of Florida. If we go out and look at August 1st, that death count is going to, uh, is expected to rise to about 5,782. Let's also real quickly flip over and take a look at this same chart for the entire United States. So here is the uh, death, uh, total deaths for the uh, United States and the projected line. You can see where we are today and they're looking out at August 1st. Uh, and predicting that our uh, morbidity is going to uh, top uh, 147,000 come August 1st. So this is still a very dangerous situation. Uh, this is a deadly disease. It will kill you uh, and we need to continue to be cautious and, and practice good social distancing and safe hygiene practices. So let's uh, hone in just a little bit and take a look at Pinellas County and, and see where we're doing here. Uh, Wednesday and Thursday, between Wednesday and Thursday, we were pretty much flat in terms of the number of new cases reporting in Pinellas County. Overnight, uh, we went from 922 to 962. Uh, that means we increased uh, 40 new cases in Pinellas County. 
uh, in a single night. That's almost more cases in one night than what we had had uh, in the entire previous week. In the previous weeks, when we saw a significant increase, it was usually because of a data dump, which means that all the testing that was occurring, uh, they would take those test results over three or four days, and then as the lab information became available, they would report it back out, and it tended to come in, in what was a data dump, and you saw a spike in numbers. Uh, the experts are saying that this increase that we're seeing today, pretty significant increase, is directly related to the increased number of people who are out and about and uh, uh, leading their lives. And I just, I, I want to caution everyone. Um, I know you're sick of the restrictions. I know you want to get on with your life, that you want to get out of your apartment, that you want to interact with others and socialize and and get out and about and just get in your car and drive around and, and be free to go back to the way life used to be. Uh, we're not there yet. Uh, I really need everybody to continue to focus on this uh, for the next two to three weeks. The effort that we do now, we don't wanna see that completely destroyed and have us go back to where we have to start this process all over again and instead of looking at a couple of weeks of additional effort, be looking at two to three months of additional effort. So your continued support and cooperation and patience as we move forward is, is needed now more than ever before. Please pay attention to the number of people that are in the breezeway. If you're in the breezeway, are you practicing good social distancing? Are you limiting your participation in small groups to less than four? Uh, I've seen situations out on the breezeway where uh, everyone's having a good time, and I, I certainly support that, but there are sometimes six or more people at a, at a table. So make sure that you're practicing good social dis discipline and, and maintaining uh, a safe distance between others. If you are leaving our campus, we discourage you from doing that, but if you are leaving the campus, it is really important that you protect yourself, that you wear gloves, that you wear a mask, uh, upon returning that you check in, have your temperature taken, uh, make sure you wash your hands uh, thoroughly upon returning, change your clothing, practice good personal hygiene. These are all the things that are going to continue to keep us safe. Uh, we've done so well as a community with the support of the residents in preventing the spread of this virus and keeping everyone safe. Let's make sure that we're diligent now. And uh, you know, the, the race is going to be won here at the end. Uh, and let's make sure we don't quit before we're finished. So thank you for your own ongoing support. And I know this is tough, but I also know I can count on each and every one of you. Leslie, uh, who will give us an update on what's happening uh, within the community. Hello, we'd like to report that we currently have 14 residents that are in quarantine in independent living at Region Sea Oaks. We currently have uh, no confirmed COVID cases between residents and staff as well as no current testing in the independent living for residents or staff and no one showing any flu-like symptoms for residents or staff at region sea oaks all right thank you leslie and uh, we will now go directly to our administrative reports uh amy why don't you start us off great we have we're currently scheduled for two closings in may for this month um, we've also been the fortunate recipients of a second award for a corporate contest uh, that our regional team is doing with the assistance of Jim and Mary Ellen Bader. Uh, we were able to place second in a creative personal follow-up connection last week. So Regency Oaks has won two awards as part of this four-part contest and we're hoping to win more. Everybody, Jesse Rosalie, your EDS director. Just want to give everybody an update. Uh, my office actually has been moved from the third floor closet 
to downstairs, the first floor, right by the front desk in the south building. Thank you. Good morning, Ricky Baca, food and beverage director. Uh, just a couple of things. I got a lot of great feedback on our Mother's Day um, delivery service. And also I want you to be aware that we'll be delivering all kinds of special treats this week. Phil ordered a whole bunch of things and I know that uh, the residents really love them. So enjoy it and have a great day. Good morning, day. I'm Christine Sensikovich, Personalized Living Director. I just wanted to give um, some more information about our transition date. We are still looking forward to becoming part of LCS's family and that should be happening at the end of May, May 31st. Thank you. I'm Lauren Rose, Director of Administrative Services and I have some exciting news for the residents. Yes, it is true that the salon will be opening again this coming Tuesday. Just please be aware that they will be practicing safe distancing. So the setup may be a little unfamiliar to you and some changes will be put in place. Also be aware that payments can only be made by having the charge posted to your monthly service fee account. They will not be accepting any payments other than through the Regency Oaks reimbursement system. Thank you and happy styling. Good morning, I'm Rance Macy. I'm the healthcare administrator at the health center next door. Uh, the only really update I have this week is the Agency for Healthcare Administration announced Sunday night that they are mandating that all employees and all residents and a skilled nursing or assisted living setting will have to be tested for COVID-19. Uh, we welcome the test. I don't have a date yet. Um, and we're not exactly sure how they're going to do it. I don't think they know how they're going to do it, but we know it's going to probably be the next month or so. Thank you. Next week, we'll be posting on the new washer and dryers, the instructions on how to use the precise fill and the non-precise fill washers. Good morning, Regency Oaks. I just want to take a few minutes to just thank my team for all of the hard work and diligence um, between Ginger and coming up with our creative ways to be um, within the social distancing with our programs and activities. Um, Zelko really taking charge and being at the front desk and our transportation team helping out with the meal deliveries. So they have truly transformed what they do with their day to day and I just want to thank them. As well as you probably will notice that um, the other day we put in your mailboxes for the coloring and relaxation. Please contact Ginger so that she can get you your coloring packet as well as the color pencils that we are providing to you as well as um, the shopping list have been great. Thank you so much for your diligence and making sure that you're as precise as possible with those. Thank you and happy Friday. Thank you all. Well, that was a great, that was a great update. Now, now next Friday at this time, you know, we have our 2020 objectives and we're going to be laying those out, all the associates and, and the and the associated board members that have each one of our five objectives are going to be able to present those. So that's what we're having next Friday at this time. And uh, with that, I think we should have some questions. Now it's time for our questions and answers section. So I have had several residents ask me um, when the dining room reopens, are there plans to reestablish the salad bar? So yes, uh, the salad bar will be returning. It will be, Again. yes, the salad bar will be returning. However, it will be the very last thing that comes back at, at Regency Oaks. And so uh, we are world renowned for our salad bar and that is something that we eventually will uh, return. I know residents uh, enjoy it and are looking forward to it. Good morning, Regency Oaks, and happy Friday. I have a question. Are residents allowed to leave the campus and visit their family? And if so, what's the protocol upon returning? A few people ask me if the caddies, um, if there's a charge for the caddies, and they're actually are free. We just ask that you call us and then we'll deliver it to you. Uh, as soon as you use it, we'll bring it back to the office, disinfect it, and wait for you to call us back if you need it. Thank you for that question, Sherry. You are allowed to go off campus to uh, visit family, but as Brant uh, stated earlier, we do not recommend you leave your apartment to visit family members because of our senior population. A lot of our residents have these underlying conditions who are prone to getting COVID-19. So we do not recommend you go off campus. Now, if you do go off campus, you will need to check in with the front desk and have your temperature taken. 
This is so we can establish that baseline temperature and keep track of your temperature since you are going off campus. Also, if you are leaving for an extended time to visit family, such as spending the night, you will be on the quarantine list, and that's for 14 days. A couple questions. So actually, I have one question. I'm sorry. When are we getting ice cream? The answer to that question is this Sunday, the, our, our servers will be handing out drumsticks, uh, Phil bought, I don't know, 30-something cases of the uh, drumsticks that you get out on the, uh, when we have the barbecues. So enjoy. Thank you. Uh, the residents ask me if there's going to be any changes with our staffing or our services. The answer to that question is no. The only actual change we're going to have is we'll no longer be known as personalized living. We'll be known as innovative home services. There'll be no interruption in any type of our services and our staffing will remain the same. Thank Several you. Several residents come and ask for an update on the pool. Um, they are stating that the pool is not just for recreational purposes, but it is a form of physical therapy and they feel that they could use that help again. So great question. Uh, the activity in the pool area is going to pick up significantly uh, uh, starting tomorrow, Saturday. Uh, Saturday, they are coming out to remove the paver floor. Uh, there is a new floor that is going down on the interior of the, of the pool. Uh, and the schedule is pretty compressed at this point. So they'll remove that tile. Next Monday, they will start construction of the pagoda. Uh, the following week, they will build the outdoor kitchen. The third week is the installation of the uh, new pavers. And then the fourth week is finishing touches and the installation of the new pool furniture. So this project is going to finish up over the next four or five weeks. And uh, our goal is to have that pool reopen at about the same time we come off of uh, restrictions and go to phase one. Well, those are all, those are all great questions. Uh, I thank you all for them, but the question that I get the most of is, when are we opening the gyms? <clears throat> People are getting anxious and they want to have their gyms open, so I hope we can get some sort of answer on that, please. So, great, great question. Uh, the gyms are, are going to follow uh, the same protocol for the beauty shops. And so, the uh, governor of the state of Florida shut down the beauty shops and the gyms by executive order. He lifted the executive order for the beauty salons, and as you know, our beauty salon is reopening next week. That same process will occur with the gyms. Uh, currently, in phase one, gyms are, are closed. There is speculation that uh, the governor is going to uh, move to phase two in the very uh, near future. And when he does, uh, we also will move to reopen the gyms. There will be a lag time uh, because we have a built-in uh, lag time. Uh, so once the governor issues his orders, we'll follow, uh, but it will not be immediately. So hopefully in the next uh, few short weeks, we should have those gyms uh, back open and I, I know people are anxious to get back to them. Right.